everybody and their neighbor. Welcome back to Gear and Gigs. I'm your host, Jeff Stone. So glad to be with you here. So glad you could stop by. Today we have a special guest with my compatriot and I, Trey Hawkins. Trey, how you doing, buddy? Good. You want to tell them who our special guest is? I know you want to. I, I really do. So today we have Brian and Nick from the band Driving Slow Motion. Hey. How you guys doing? Good. Thank you for having us on here. Yeah, of course. The show. Yeah. So, uh, you know, tell us about the band, how you guys got started, um, you know, all the things yeah. you want to share. Um, it started with Brian, so. It, it did, I guess. Um, I, we all, we've been friends since like high school time, I guess like what, 15, 16 years ago for yeah. some of us. Um, and we played in various bands. Some of it was kind of post hardcore kind of that, um, like even the metal core kind of stuff. And then we, we all had families and kind of went our ways and we all, we always stayed friends, but, uh, we started get liking the instrumental stuff probably about 10, 12 years ago. And so we were always like, Oh man, I wish we would have done that like back in the day. <laughs> right. And finally, I, I just started writing stuff and I think I was writing on an acoustic guitar and I was sending stuff to Dustin, our drummer. And he was like, Oh man, I really like this stuff. And you know, too bad we don't have, a full band to do this and i was like well we know guys right <laughs> i hit them all up i'm like hey this is just to record some music and have fun we're not going to do anything with this and that obviously was the antithesis so we we've been uh just grinding stuff out ever since i think it was like 2017 Nick, right right yeah yeah that sounds right yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to tell because we have been friends for so long and writing music together and i remember one of the first things that uh Brian had sent me it was just for me it felt like we did the instrumental thing almost by accident mm -hmm. like it just happened organically because we we just didn't talk to any vocalists we just kept talking about music and you know um, I think a lot of how our writing styles and you know we have three guitarists in the band I, I feel like a lot of how it happened was just organically because the three of us write very differently. And um, and I just remember Brian sending us, like he'd send me stuff, he'd send our other guitarist Jason stuff, and he'd send Dustin stuff, and he's our drummer. And we just started collaborating just randomly. And I've always been the, <laughs> trying to get better at this, but I've always been the guy who's kind of like, doesn't really know what's going on in the band. <laughs> I've gotten better in the past year, but I'm always that guy that's like, wait, we have a show? What, what's going on? You know? Right. But, uh, you know, when it came to writing and stuff, I just remember, like, um, I've never played with a group of guys, specifically with a band that had three guitarists that we could write so easily together. And yeah. we weren't playing on top of each other. And I mean, there's, I mean, nine times out of 10, if we were to sit down, we could write a song off the bat with like first try. It, it, it's, yeah. I've never had that happen before. And you uh, could be an awesome Leonard Skinner cover band with three guitar yeah. players too. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> right. If somebody else Freebird, you guys could actually maybe that's pull right. it off. So that's, that's, that's the goal. goal. Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. That is the goal, right? That's yeah. the goal. That's, that should be a T-shirt. Freebird is the goal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> with a lighter, just a lighter behind. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, wait. I digress. Go ahead. No, but I think the I I remember the first song I wrote too. Uh, with these guys was uh, off our first EP called Anduin and it would just happen so like like I said organically like Dustin and Brian had the parts like the structure of mm -hmm. all the songs ready and I just had to for me that's like I lean pretty heavy on Brian and Dustin and Jason like I always write to what they already have for the sure. most part and, and it was just I just remember picking up the guitar and almost nailing the lead line for that song like right on the spot and, and it just worked right. um so like riding with the guys is always it's never like a uh, never stressed out of like oh man i hope we can write something yeah and i just remember like when brian was uh you know he approached jason and i uh i just was like oh i'm just helping my buddy write a song like this is for fun you know and right and, and it still is but it just i remember like brian's like hey so we have a show uh, in january I was like, wait, we have a show? <laughs> I thought we were just like playing songs, you know? So it was it was cool though. Like for me, I'm sure everybody else knew it was going on and it was planned. 
But for yeah. me, I was like, oh, this is okay, cool. Let's try yeah. it out. Let's see what happens. So you got like all of the the zero stress like build up for everything. Oh, yeah. You're just I like, oh, so we're a band. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's, I I think I know why. It's like I just have a lot of other things in life that have been stressing me out for the past couple of years, and it's like the band is the one thing that I I lean pretty heavy on the guys. Like I'm just up there for them if they need me, and they're mm. I mean, vice versa. And uh, and I trust um, their judgment on a lot of things, and so it's just for me, it's just hanging out with my buddies writing a song. Right. That, that, you know, I feel like all of our songs have a lot of weight to it. Like it actually means something to us. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think that um, when you wrote to Anduin, that's where we started to kind of cue in on like having more of a cinematic sound. So, oh, yeah. I mean, we, that's something that we, we always have in mind when we're writing a song and, um, and granted, a lot of post rock is like that, but um, sure. it's really where we hit home, like uh, movies, like in in books, and just scenes, even that we make up in our heads. <laughs> right, and it, it's kind of a little soundtrack, I guess, if you will. So, so are you, are you actually writing? Like, do you take scenes like from movies and kind of remove the music and and write your own score, or is it just more of a conceptual? <laughs> kind of you know hey i really liked this part in in this movie and i think that i could come up with a mood for it well i'll let, I'll let nick answer that one <laughs> uh, yeah so i i definitely um the way i write i either imagine a creature or some a lot of the things i write i don't mean to but they always seem very dark sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i'm a happy guy i promise but um yeah so i'll watch a movie on mute and write to it because I'm cool. a huge fan of, uh, you know, Hans Zimmer. I mean, everybody, that guy's yeah. just genius. Um, but, yeah, so I'm a huge fan of, like, writing to a movie on mute or thinking of some sort of, like, Godzilla-esque creature and trying to, like, oh, I wonder, um, like, one of the first things that Brian, he kind of encouraged me when we first started trying to mess with this kind of stuff was, like, you know, we're all huge fans of Lord of the Rings and, Treebeard, who's an ants, you know, giant tree. Like, yeah, I remember him asking me, like, hey, is there a way? I mean, we should try and emulate what a tree would sound like talking out of your guitar. And I remember, like, we wrote, like, this little thing called Entish, and, which is the language they speak. But, uh, you know, just trying to kind of push the boundaries with what a typical guitar sounds like and trying to make it sound like a – like a sound effect, like a, like a, either a, you know, a ship going by or sounds of the ocean or, uh, you know, in our case, like off of our album Arda, we have a song called uh, Shout on Flame. And uh, that was a huge, like a Balrog, which is this big, fiery, demonic creature in Lord of the Rings, um, was a huge influence on that song. Um, like we have about probably three to four minutes into the song, it's probably about four, uh, you know, we have emulating a Balrog scream in there. And so, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I could keep talking about that forever. Today. Well, I could keep listening. I'm a big Lord yeah. of the Rings fan, as is I, Trey. We love that stuff. Right. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the Ents because um, they're known for their patience, of course. And one of the things that I've noticed in your music is that you have a sense of patience like I've not heard too many people have, including myself. I, I always have this um, <clears throat> sense of purpose, I feel like, when I get into a song, and so I'm always feeling like I'm going somewhere with it, and I'm kind of, like, anxious to get there. <laughs> and your music doesn't seem like it has that so much as this sense of place and purpose and, like, you're along for this ride, and we are going to patiently get to where we're, we're going to get to where we're supposed to. And it's you only hear that in certain bands to me the rolling stones have that and the beatles don't you know it's just a subtle thing but yeah. but you guys really had that in space i think that's very cool yeah and i think we like so maybe i'm a little selfish about it but like when i asked nick to do those things it's we, we actually play in tish live it's a little interlude in between mm -hmm. songs because our set's seamless i mean it's there is no right. blank space really um but and if you if you watch us live, like we all, we get pretty into it, and uh, I think that it's we really dive into the story of, right. of the songs, and that's maybe it's selfish of me, but I like I live for that, and so it's less about 
like, oh man, I want to put on a good show for everyone else. It's like, hey, I just, I want to melt up here. And that, yeah, and that, so. it's very emotional. Yeah, it's very, yeah. like, the songs have a lot of emotion. And I think our stage presence and, and our light show that we have, it's all to like, it all feeds off of each other. It's, it's, uh, I remember when we were talking about the, the whole concept of the album and it was like a journey basically. And, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you have, when you're on a journey, whether you're sailing or, uh, just, you know, hiking or something, there's, there's these just slow momentous things that happen. And it, and, you know, we talked a lot, we even had, we have one of our merch shirts had like a ship on it and stuff. Cause we were talking about how, uh, just it's, it's like the ocean in a sense, it's uh, calm at some times it, at times. And then it's ferocious and scary and in others. And so I, I think that that pays a lot of, uh, what we were hoping to achieve. And I'm really like, personally, like this is the, as far as music goes, one of the most things I'm proud of and very blessed to be able to like share it with good guys, good friends. So that's a that's a hard thing to find i mean i've I've played in a bunch of different bands and and having that yeah we'll be able to write like dude i didn't get that until i was like 27 uh and you know that yeah like it's harder to get that emotion that you're talking about and and be able to just kind of fall into the music on stage and and be a part of that you know emotive position with it if you don't have that kind of trust with the dudes that you're with because then you're like always in the back of your head like man is he gonna nail that drum fill yeah i think he's gonna nail that drum fill like and 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 so that's really really cool that y'all have that and i mean the the thing that attracted me to y'all's music first because i was a, a huge um alcest fan and they're mm-hmm. not quite the, the same but there's there's some elements to it and they do a lot of mystical kind of influence for their things and and so the the lord of the rings references i was like oh okay cool so i'm gonna like this haven't even listened to it yet but i know i'm gonna like it uh, but but that's like that's it made sense listening to tracks that were lord of the rings inspired that i went oh yeah cool i know this movie backwards and forwards and the emotions that they're bringing out and the things are totally in line with the way you feel when you're watching the movies or, or reading the books so that's I mean, it's not trying to just you know gas you all up but it's, <laughs> you know, it's cool i like it it's uh you know we we try not to have people on the show that we don't like so uh, <laughs> Say thank you to me. I mean, that means a lot to us. I know, and it, it will mean a lot to Dustin and Carter. Carter's our bass player, and uh, Jason, our other guitarist. When I first listened to uh, to Rush, when I first got into Rush, I was also getting into Lord of the Rings. So for those, oh, yeah. in my mind, those two things are linked. You know, I, I yeah. and uh, especially Farewell to Kings, when you it just works really well with Lord of the Rings as it has it <laughs> as it happens. And when I first started listening to you guys, that's what I thought. The first thing that hit me was like, well, somebody in this band likes Rush because there's some definite Rush progression chords that hit me like, oh yeah, I dig that. That's cool. And it immediately immediately made me think. Lord of the Rings. So there you go. That came through at least to me. Yeah. And what's uh, funny is the we we obviously knew um, that Lord of the Rings and Tolkien, anything Tolkien really was going to have some sort of in, be a, some sort of an inspiration in this project. But Arda was actually going to be our band name, and mm, we had really? like we already had like art and everything, and then yeah. we were like, oh man, there's this Russian band. And we, we <laughs> contemplated, we were like, no one will ever know. Like, yeah. We, just, <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we went with a name that Jason had um, coined it like probably 10 years ago or something. And he had started writing ambient stuff. And mm-hmm. he had just, like a MySpace page. If yeah. I remember. MySpace. Yes. So it was saved. Like <laughs> MySpace saved the day. <laughs> so oh, we, right. uh, well, yeah. So what, what is the, the meaning behind the name or is there one? Um, I think Jason's explained it that he he wrote either he wrote something or a group of people were listening to something really chill. Like he was really into Appleseed Cast and bands like that, and so um, they were like, "Oh man, this is like driving in slow motion," or something. It was like that, and he just cut out the end, yeah. and uh, that's kind of what what inspired it. Just once again, like you're describing a feeling, um, which yeah. is much like what we we try to write too, so. 
but yeah, it's the the Lord of the Rings thing. Um, we we battled like whether we should be so explicit with it in titles, mm. um, but I think we like. I mean, I remember going through the books and being like, ah, oh, no, I, I don't want something from the movies that's so easy to grasp. I mean, we went through right. all these different pages and like uh, Windows and a Stone Wall is probably my favorite uh, title of a song. Mm. And that's talking about Sauron and how, like, what his heart was like, basically. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was really cool. Um, we, we had fun writing the record and coming up with these concepts. Well, if you ever want an obscure Tolkien reference, you just go to the Silmarillion and pull something out. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, yeah, that's awesome that, uh, that you went that in depth with it, too. Because, I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost like this, you know, Lord of the Rings has been around for a long time. And, <laughs> you know, unless you, you know, like, if you know, you know. Yeah. But but the average person isn't going to necessarily pick out little things like that, and and even I didn't know uh, Windows was a was a specific reference like that. But but even some of the ones that I did, it's cool to kind of go like, hey, I get that. Yeah, like I, I know what I know what that reference is. Yeah, well, we'd be friends. It's yeah. like when you listen to Russian, they play Rivendell, and you're like, oh, okay, they get it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and they did so, that before the movies were made too. So they did. Yeah. Yeah. So going from Arda to Nightfall, um, what kind of, was there a, um, I mean, cause it still obviously feels like you guys, but what was the, the writing process and kind of thought behind that? Cause y'all just dropped that, uh, what, like not even a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was actually an acoustic song that I had written many years ago. Um, and it actually like, it was in my head going to be this, kind of animals as leaders type song, like pretty heavy. And um, it didn't go there because uh, my friend Colin, who we collaborated with, uh, he's Souls. Um, and he, we were having, we used to write all these dumb like house songs and like techno songs and just would have fun and that right. kind of thing. And so we'd stay up till like three in the morning writing. And I played that, one of the riffs on that. And he's like, oh, hold on. And he started like messing with all his stuff and transposing it to piano and to strings. And we sat on that, I think since 2013, 2014. And, oh, wow. um, yeah, we stayed friends and I mentioned to the guys, I was like, Hey, is this quarantine? We need to do something. Um, yeah. like what, what are we going to do? And we weren't really able to meet up. So we tracked, I, I pitched the idea of doing that song and I talked to Colin, he was down. And so we all tracked from our houses and just, I mean, we don't even have the best recording setups at our houses. That's uh, yeah. just kind of our rough gear. <laughs> right. And, uh, Colin mixed it all and took some cool drone fo footage from Colorado and made it a thing. But we we kind of themed it. We didn't want to go all outright and be like, okay, here's like this depressing thing about COVID. But it kind of mm. just was like, hey, like there's a hope in in this dark. So that's why we called it Nightfall at that point. Awesome. And it was interesting writing to that because it was, it's very, uh, there's lots of keys and lots of strings and things like that. And uh, so yeah, a lot of space did, that would normally be yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. To kind of feel. Uh, yeah. Cause I do like my role in the band is more of the atmospheric. I have a lot of um, effects that I can sound like a choir. I can sound like a, an orchestra or a cello, anything like that. And we, we do use that all throughout our album and live. Mm -hmm. Uh, that explains it. I kept listening to some of these keyboard parts that that I'm going, man, that, that sounds like it's being played on a guitar. So thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy that's like, I wish I was a, a keyboardist, but I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it was, it was really, it, it was, I liked it writing that way. Cause I felt like mentally it was stretching me in how to mm -hmm. think differently um, right. and not rely so heavily on the things I'm used to. And so it was, it was a really fun collaboration. And one thing I really liked is like, like had Brian had said, he, he was like, hey, you know, this is quarantine. We've got to do something, but it wasn't like it was that, but mixed with, we have to do something with meaning. Um, right. I remember Brian saying something to the extent of like, you know, this is a really dark time for a lot of people and we want to produce something that is hopeful sounding and a light in a dark place that's a common phrase that we say in our band. It's like, we want to be a light in the shadows basically. 
And so how can we do that? And, and I feel like, like I'm very proud of Nightfall. Uh, it was a lot of fun to write to. Um, mm. And it was unique too, because like Brian said, we had to all write individually. I was in the process of moving at the time. And so it was just like, uh, again, being lucky enough to play with guys that it's so easy to write to. It was, right. you know, something that didn't take about an hour almost uh, for me to write all my parts to. So yeah. it was a really good experience. Well, so does it, uh, so when y'all are normally writing like in ideal conditions, are you like kind of coming to a space with a riff and you start writing or is it, or are you doing everything way more premeditated where you're writing and arranging a bunch of stuff and then going, okay, here's this. And now everybody put their, their parts into it. Um, or is it typically just kind of individual writing and then bringing it all together? I think, um, it's a little half and half. So. I'd say about half of Ardo was written in a jam space, and we okay. really kind of hashed out some ideas. Half of the record was not, and it was you know either demoed out, um, you know, just preconceived stuff, or um, or we all tracked as we did Nightfall, basically. But we all went to a studio space to do it. We just would filter in at different times and right. work on ideas and. I think that if we, I mean, obviously, I think any band, you'd want to write the whole album in one sitting. Like that's sure you could, um, but we don't. Yeah, have cab to. cabin in the woods for exactly. a month. You know, <laughs> we've that, actually like, like pitched that idea for the, <laughs> <laughs> like a few yeah. times, but, um, but Just, yeah, I'd say half and half, and um, some of it like we, some of the more chill songs on that, um, like Dawn Voyage is one that Nick wrote. I mean, we we were like, hey we're going to let you have this one. Like, cause it, yeah, we yeah. add stuff that we feel like it'd be taking away from what you did. So, um, it, the record had everyone had a spot to shine and it was, it was kind of cool. So. Well, that's neat too. Cause I would have never guessed that you had individual voices. Like, you know, on a Beatles record, you can tell like George Harrison wrote this, Paul wrote this, but, it, but it's neat. I mean, to have, you know, especially five guys just having their own voice, but you're all kind of, just on the same page again, which probably is indicative of that. You don't have trouble writing together. It's, you can just, you just know what it's going to work. And yeah, it's really um, like we've been talking about. Um, you know, we're we're trying to write some new stuff now, and uh, but the whole concept has always been like we don't have to um, be we, like if there's a part that I just don't need to play, I'm just not going to play because yeah. we wanted to add to the song. And I remember when I brought Don Voyage up, um, you know, I thought it was going to be, you know, a collaboration. And they were like, I showed them what I, because we, we do a lot of like, you know, record it on your voice memos on your phone, yeah, yeah. put it in the text. Hey guys, what do you think about this? And I remember I had written Don Voyage and uh, which is just the last track on our album. And I sent it to the guys and I was like, you know, I was waiting to hear ideas on what they wanted to do. And they were all like, dude, just, you just record it. Let's just leave it like that. And yeah. um, and I was like, wow, that's cool. You know? Yeah. Um, and so we were taking that. I feel like we might be even taking it to another level uh, on some of this new stuff. Where, hey man, if, if I don't need to play, like, I don't need to play. <laughs> right. It's about the song and about the the meaning behind it, the emotion behind it, all of that. Right. You know, that's interesting. It sounds like you have a very egoless situation, which of course in, in this industry is hard to find anyway. <laughs> but but that ties into something else that I hear in your music, which is you don't play at the listener. You tend to play with the listener, so to speak. I mean, you kind of like pull them in in an, in, in an intimate way. And then when you get powerful, you don't bludgeon them. It's more like you've kind of raised them up to a, a place of power with you. And I don't know if that's what you're trying to do, but that's what I hear. And and so it makes, there's a lot of uh, bands that do dynamics, you know, but there's something different about the way you do yours that seems more compelling. So I, I really like that. We may have to get him to write like our bio or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like everything that we were hoping for, like people hear and feel yeah. about us, like you're just nailing. Like yeah. so, Well, it's it, coming through. It's coming through. So yeah. that's, that's really back on you. Well, it's funny, like when we play a live show, it's really, I laugh sometimes because uh, just out of joy, but I laugh because like I look at the crowd and it's like they're all in a trance. Like it's yeah. 
it's yeah. it's uh because we got a light show and it's very emotional and and i i'm really proud of our set the guys like you know we all collaborated on that and the flow and uh dustin our drummer he does an amazing job of like build, we played it with click um mm -hmm. like brian said it's very seamless we don't talk in between the songs it's it's a we want people to feel like they're watching a movie soundtrack yeah and uh, it's it's so funny to see it's just like everybody's just in a trance <laughs> and uh so it's cool well it's cool that you try to maintain that suspension of disbelief in between songs so the whole Mm -hmm. Concert feels like a sense of occasion as opposed to we've come up and now we're totally back down to casual. Uh, yeah. That's that's very cool. That's very theatrical. That's, well, that's awesome. Well, you don't have to like get the crowd back in between songs, which that's is a good cool. Point, yeah. Like and and like I know that we definitely do that too. I mean, Seth will talk because he's a vocalist and he can't help himself. But <laughs> like you know, and and there's a part of it that's you know not scripted, but like we want him to just kind of talk and, and engage the crowd. But like in a lot of bands that I've been in, you know, in between songs is the all right, come on, we gotta <laughs> we gotta you know yeah. jump back on this next song so we don't lose everybody. Um, and and especially doing cinematic atmospheric atmospheric music. That is pretty much what you want is for them to be in that headspace the entire time yeah. because i mean your set's like what 45 minutes yeah we have we have different sets um but we did this one the one for this year that we've been doing or we're going to do <laughs> where everything happened uh, it was about 40 minutes so. okay yeah. yeah i mean 40 minutes worth of emotional stuff is kind of what you want anyway yeah i mean so and I, I play in an instrumental band too, doing uh, oh. cosmic jazz, I guess you'd call it. And yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm really into the instrumental thing anyway. And you can really play. Yeah. Part, well, I don't know about <laughs> that. Thank you for saying it, but but what I hear with your music also is something that that you don't find with a lot of instrumental bands is that I never. I'm never waiting for like the the vocals to come in. You know, I'm never missing vocals, and and. That's hard to do, especially with ambient music where you don't feel like, okay, now when are we going to get to the real thing? Yours seems like the real thing instantly. And now we're just along for this. It does. It takes you places. It's very cool. Thanks for saying that. This is the first year so far, knock on wood, that I have not been said, hey, when are you going to get a vocalist? And, <laughs> you know, you hear it, and I, I think every post-rock band does. Yeah. Or even like the cosmic jazz, people ask that you that as well. But um, it's... It's nice. Like I haven't heard it yet this year. It's it's good. It's good. Well, it's, it's <laughs> like I don't listen to a you know this will destroy us album and go man I wish they had a vocalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <is> great. <laughs> like uh, yeah. So that, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, what uh, you know we talked about the fact that y'all were recording like at home right now with your with your gear. Um, I mean, what you know one of the things that I always like is to talk about is you know. What are your your main kind of mainstays in your rig, and like, like it's the thing that you don't feel like you'd really be you on stage without, like pedal or, or particular amp or, or guitar or something like that. And I have a follow up question to that. Okay, <laughs> uh, Nick, I'll be a lot quicker than you. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm more of I have a more basic setup uh, than okay. most of the guys, and so I I have. Um, like basically three stages of drive because I usually play a lot of the heavier stuff. But um, I probably my favorite pedal that I could not do without would be the Strymon El Capistan. It's definitely my favorite, and it has a. I basically have that thing on the entire set. Yeah. It just kind of mix the mix goes up or down, and um, right. obviously it's. I don't have anything fancy. I just have that tap tempo. So mm -hmm. in between songs, like I'll hear the click change and. You'll notice me go over and tap, but that's my favorite pedal. I, I love the sound of it, um, and so it kind of it fattens my sound while keeping it. Uh, it's unique, and um, right. I know a lot of bands use it, but it's. Uh, I don't think my tone would be the same without it. Yeah, hands down, favorite delay, like ever. Yeah. <laughs> and I've tried a lot, but yeah. yeah. That's I like the Volante, but whatever. I haven't tried that one, but I keep that's seeing good. it on people's boards. I really like it. I mean, I can get that El Capistan thing, but a lot of other stuff, and I like the functionality of it. And and uh, sorry, I'm looking over there. It's right over there. And uh, it's. Um, I thought the El Capistan was. I'll probably get hate mail for this, but I thought it was a little noisy. 
and you know tape yeah. echoes really are noisy so maybe that's okay if that's what you're right. going for but when the volante yeah. came out i'm like oh man there's my pedal right there yeah <laughs> and see i'm too dumb for the volante like <laughs> I, I tried to like mess with it and i just you know because if you have this understanding of how tape actually works well yeah it's, it's not that hard but i'm once again just not intelligent enough to go yeah this sounds great it does but i don't know how i got here yeah. With the, I mean, I, I like the simplicity of like adding the wow and flutter and the tape age to it and getting that kind of warm feeling yeah. without having to, to change tape heads and do all of these things that are just buzzwords that I don't really know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Tape back, though, I used to have one here in the studio and God, they are really good. Yeah. I guess but, I'm the tray of the band because I, I don't know <laughs> the way that I make things sound the way I want them. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. Don't look back, basically. <laughs> But, yeah, Brian's yeah. definitely like I feel like he's like the backbone. Um, we like we couldn't play a song without Brian for sure, you know. And, and um, which I guess I could honestly say about all the guys, but you know he would be the one that you would notice the most. I mean, he, he he really is the backbone, and so his his board. I feel like each of our roles greatly affect our equipment, and sure. um, so like even Jason, our. Uh, our other guitarist he's he's got a board that i would say um you know it reflects a little bit of what brian's got and it reflects a little bit of what i've got um i'm on a different uh, spectrum i guess you could say like my board is uh fairly big um mm -hmm. and it's very intricate i'm pretty i'm an ocb guy and so cable management all of that stuff and i mean i have I have like a little run through on my Instagram uh, and it's 11 minutes long or something like that. And that was me yeah. trying to hurry, <laughs> um, you know, but if, if, so I've got, I've got a full rig of, like I said, I can do wires and uh, synthesizers and all that. But if I had to like pick a pedal, it'd be the Strum and Big Sky. Um, yeah. I, I, there's just like, I'm a reverb a hundred percent guy. And um, it's just, it's like, that's a pedal that I could play um, with just that, and I could I could still do a lot of the things I need to. Um, but one of my like favorite pedals that I have is the Earthquaker Devices uh, Rainbow Machine. Oh yep. yeah, yeah. So that thing is I use cool. that on. I can't remember what song off the top of my head. I want to say it's uh, Far From Home. I use that on, but I had to that thing is very sensitive and if i have it yep. taped down if it moves just an just any knob if it moves a hair it has a completely different sound and yeah. so i had to get a little creative when it came to um this I, I found a very specific setting i liked and i've never heard any other pedal do this or and yeah. i've never heard it used in a song so i was pretty like oh i gotta get this try and you know yeah those are cool. Okay, so my follow-up question is this. If you had to play a show, you went to a show, you get there, and they, you, you're, you're told the show is going to pay three times as much as we thought, but they have outlawed all time-based effects here. They'll let you slide with modulation, but they're not allowing any delay or reverb of any kind here. So, so you got to play the show but you can't use them. But you can go to their local store where they have every effect you want. And you each can pick one effect that you can use to not necessarily replace, but in your hearts, replace the, the arsenal that you've just lost. Which would it be? What effect would you get as your replacement? <laughs> Which you can't I was be, thinking can't back time to when effect. I, like, because we had a baby last year. And um, so I had sold some gear. So I was out without a delay for a little while. Oh, and so wow. I was like, so there you go. I showed up in practice. And so, so I was like, your answer can't be a baby. Okay. That's not a <laughs> man. That's where I was going. <laughs> But uh, I, I basically, for one practice, had to emulate a delay by kind of like backing off volume and just kind of like barely bending up. The god, oh my god! So <laughs> it, it, it worked for what for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so maybe I wouldn't get anything. Maybe uh, I would just wing it. Just on deal with it. Volume pedal? Yeah. You could do it with a volume pedal, maybe. Good volume pedal, or just like interesting. Whatever. Okay. So, so basically, like one pedal is all you can use is that what you're well, saying you can have anything else that you have as far as drives or modulation yeah. that you get to keep all that but they're ripping out the delays and reverbs right off your board they're throwing those away but they feel bad about it so you can go to the store and they're going to give you 
anything you like that's not time based because like that because they just hate that there. Man, I don't know because it's uh, volume pedal. And my foot is on the volume pedal. Always. Almost ninety. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my shit hurts actually, just thinking about that. Yeah, I I probably have a bad right hip because mm, of it. I bet. <laughs> but um, man, I might just choose like a heavy uh, distortion. Wow. You know, just like, cover it up with grunge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just um, you just play loud and and play like I probably like if I was to be specific, I'd probably go with the Walrus Audio Iron Horse. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, that thing is a really it cleans up really good, but it also man it gets mean. And that is a pedal that like we have some pretty heavy moments in our songs that I'd want to lean on that for, and I could play clean everything else. Because right. we've we've actually taken uh, Brian, Jason, and I have played uh, several of our songs from Arda and played them ambient, meaning. We didn't play to the click. We didn't play with our light show. We didn't play with our drummer or our bass player. It was in this awesome coffee shop. And I said, that was the art show y'all did, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was, yeah. it was very different, but man, we got a lot of great feedback about it. And, uh, uh it was just, you know, so we, I remember we kind of had to not necessarily rewrite anything, but we had to play more simply. And so, yeah, I, I think we could definitely do it. <laughs> It's like, I mean, I, f I feel like I would probably maybe grab like a tremolo or something. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Is I probably like, grab like something a tremolo yeah. just to kind of thicken it up. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, yeah. dude, I played a church gig one time where I showed up and they were like, yeah, yeah, we have a pedal board. And it, the pedal board was in fact just an AC-15. And, <laughs> and I was like, uh, all right. So they had like so, a foot switch. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I had to play the whole thing with just my guitar direct in with the reverb on the amp and oh, doing man. like the gallop of the delay, like with my right hand. Oh man. And it was the, like, it was at that point that I realized that I actually do have right hand technique because I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> I was so worried because, you yeah. know, I mean, I'd be scared. I'd be like, "Oh my gosh!" I realize <laughs> I don't know how to play my guitar. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, guys, I'm gonna hang this up. Uh, I think I'm done. <laughs> this is all for show. I just hit yeah. one string and it does everything. <laughs> so, so what would you say your your biggest Spinal Tap moment has been? Huh? No. <laughs> Didn't. Not too many of those at a coffee shop. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, when we talk about spinal tap, are we saying like the good things or like we're with the dorks? You can interpret the, the yeah. question any way you like. Um, I don't know, because uh, I guess one of my favorite moments was when somebody sent us uh, some amazing like warm cookies. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was and, awesome. Uh, and nice. they were like, they couldn't make our show or something. And so they sent us um, – cookies and oh. i was just like cookies like oh my gosh that's like my thing I love <laughs> cookies. and so when i when that happened i was like all right like we've made it <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was doing this for yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like I'm baked no goods <laughs> yeah um i like when like we'll get people that'll just be like hey can i write a poem to your music it's like you don't have to ask me but i mean yeah. I love that, though it's um it just that that kind of hey like we actually did inspire somebody so it, yeah maybe that's i'm sorry we did our music to a movie so i don't i'm not sure how that's <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> as long as it's about this specific scene in the silmarillion <laughs> actually that <laughs> might help them though you know that might help yeah. them that would be kind of cool actually yeah you should get it somebody to do that and release it as a book to go along with music that would be cool uh, Oof, you're speaking my language my friend yes. that would be cool <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that'd be like, cause Brian and I, we both, I hope you're okay with me saying this, but like we both um, have been writing a book like separately. And I remember we used to, you know, forever ago, we would meet up for lunch, talk about what we're writing. And then that goes into a lot of like what we are like, I remember like when we talked about um, just certain songs and we're like, well, what do y'all like? it's always story based. Everything's got a story. We always have like a character in mind or something like right. that. And, um, you know, it's, it's like Brian talked about like somebody asking if they could write a poem, like, 
one of my favorite things to see is when somebody posts a, a story on Instagram, like mentioning one of our songs and how uplifting it was for them, or it's impacted them in a positive way, or, or they're studying to the music or anything like that. It's super just encouraging because that's, you know, we're, I feel like we're, you know, if we have an impact on one person, then I feel like it's a benefit, you know? Um, but as far as like the flip side of the spinal tap thing, I feel like we're all like, I feel like for the most part, we're pretty mature guys. And so we aren't like, we don't find ourselves um, just being dumb a whole lot. <laughs> we've all got kids, we've all got, you know, um, hefty jobs and all of that. So we, you know, I kind of feel like sometimes like, oh my gosh, we have to play at 10 o'clock. I got to go to bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mostly that's me. Everybody else is fine. But. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad there was no cucumbers and tinfoil brought up. That was the thing no, I was worried no, no. about mostly. So that's good to know. Good <laughs> I feel like know. Carter would have a good Carter. spinal tap moment, though. Yes. yes. Carter's like our, like, I mean, he's just, he just, like, you enjoy life being around him because he enjoys life so much. <laughs> well, that's nice, though. That's nice yeah, to yeah. have oh, in the band. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So you're all a bunch of thinkers. You're all a bunch of philosophers. You're all a bunch of uh, cinematic imagery sort of folks, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good point. That's good to find, you know, that many people that are willing to do that and then, you know, give in to other people's cinematic ideas, so to speak, you know, because it's easy to get locked into a certain, this is the way it's going to be. And uh, clearly you don't have that problem. Yeah, I, I remember like... Um... Like even Nightfall and, and one of the new songs we're working on, it's like, like oh, I've, I've wrote this and I'm handing it off. And like, there's a like, there's only like a moment of like nervousness of what will this end up being like? Mm -hmm. way, and then when I get tracks back, I'm like, I could never have thought of that. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we really complement each other and expand what, I mean, I, I could not write any of the stuff that they do. So it's, it wouldn't be the picture it is without everybody. And so I think we've come to an understanding about that. That's, that's, that's awesome. cool. That's why I like to collaborate too. I can play all the parts and, and it's not that I have it on some songs, but I don't want to. And in fact, I'd yeah. rather somebody else give me the first part, like give me a track of something and now that'll generate a zillion ideas. But when it's done, it won't be something that I would have come up with on my own at all. Yeah. And that's the part I like listening to later yeah. is that, oh man, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's cool. Cause then I could think of this and I wouldn't have thought of that. If he hadn't have thought of it. So I like that. That's I'm glad yeah. to see somebody else thinks like that. Don't you find that with instrumental music that it it kind of in some ways goes with modern life better because people are busy yeah. doing a million things, but it seems like there's a lot of time when you can listen to like a soundtrack of your own for your own life, you know, and then and that's kind of the way I think of my band is like if you're driving, put on my album and it'll go right along with what you're doing, it won't get in the way and it might help your thinking, but you know, I mean it's just kind of becomes the soundtrack, I guess. Is that kind of what you're into too? Oh yeah. Like I, I think of our music as like kind of uh, an exploration. And so I do a lot of hiking and trail running and stuff. And so it's whether I'm hearing that or like another post rock band or I'm writing a song in my head, like it's, I don't really have a second of the day that doesn't have music going yep. on. And I don't know if I have a problem or if that's just the way all musicians <laughs> are both. Same, same way. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I love. It. I always get the uh, hey, you're always uh, you're always playing the music in the car. I'm like, yeah, it's by design. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I... if somebody asked that question, I'd be like, wait, what's what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, yeah, like, why are you not listening to music? All yeah. No, oh no, no, no. They're always just like, hey, can I pick something? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You yeah, don't understand. The, the the ox cord is definitely uh, a jealously guarded uh, right. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, you know, going back to the, the writing thing, I mean, it's, um, I feel like for me when I'm writing something, if I haven't had someone else's influence or, or uh, just influence, but uh, parts and, and things like that, then it's way easier for me to, to pick it apart and like second guess myself as it is when I write something and I give it to... Uh, to my singer and he puts a part on there or you know puts vocals to it and then all of a sudden i'm like cool it's not just my song anymore it's our song and so i can just enjoy it as yeah. opposed to going oh my gosh i wish i had played a 30 second note there instead of a 16th or something like that because i'm i'm that way like where i can't stop picking apart my own material 
Yeah. Um, well, as soon as somebody else plays on it, then it's like they've agreed with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think They're there's like a level of trust that that we have for each other. Um, you know, when we hand things off, it's just like, all right, I know Jason's going to kill it. I know yeah. Dustin's going to kill it. But we also like are totally open to, uh, you know, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, what if you try this? Yeah. Like one of our songs, I think it was Far From Home. Um, I was playing a, a part, uh, like our buildup, um, a certain way. And Brian was like, hey, what if you tried uh, your choir instead? It's like, okay, yeah, let's try it out. And afterwards, I was like, Psh, that's ridiculous. Like, yeah. 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 So there's a, like a level of trust when it comes to that whole process. So I think it's really, really good. Yeah. So how closely do you guys adhere to the philosophy of what we record, we have to be able to replicate live exactly that way? 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. 100%. All of it yeah we we purposely don't add a lot of layers in that we can't do live i think there's one song and it's just like there's like some like really it's high and shadow and flame yeah and that's it like it's just something that kind of fills some space but everything else all the guitar parts are all what's on the record we play live so that's cool so no no like uh backed anything tracks with the click just that song that one song yeah, yeah and it, it, all it is is it's like your it's a b string and a uh, a string i think like on the third fret or something like that and it's a freeze effect that i did because shadow and flame when i was writing that it was because that's where the balrog is yeah. it was this again a journey of like entering a, a cave like you're exploring and if you think of cave you think of like you know there's drips of water and it's just like, uh, you know, not a lot of oxygen. So there's not a lot of sound. And so it was just to emulate this like eeriness mm -hmm. and it's sort of like really just a uh, pluck and then I freeze it. And, um, and then, and so we were like, well, I can't, because of my other parts, I can't play all of that at the right. same time. And that's the only one. Um, and it's honestly just to add, like, honestly, I've never even noticed it <laughs> in our <Yeah>. set live. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Well, how, how much do the, do your guitar choices affect your, your tones or your choice of effects? I mean, cause you know, different pickups and, and different things are going to, you know, kind of change what you have to do, uh, tonally with your board or with your amp. Like what do you guys use in, and, and kind of what's your go-to settings on those, on those instruments? Um, Arda, I recorded mainly on a jazz master and I really liked that sound a lot. I got rid of that guitar. Um, but at the moment, um, I do I have a Fender Duo Sonic, and it, I like that a lot. Um, in my opinion, it's a little clinky, so it kind of has that, yeah. that mix of the, the fat strat and the telly kind of feel. And I, I like it a lot. I'm starting to be able to utilize. I use all th three or all three pickup settings on that for different parts of the song. Right. Um, but I modded a Mustang, and I remember talking to you about pickups because I was like, ah, yeah. got to get something. But I. I went ahead and got just um, some Seymour Duncan humbuckers. Mm -hmm. and I, honestly, I hated them at first. Now I'm in love with them. It's they're they're big. They're they can be round, and I, I like more of a round sound to okay. my stuff. So um, I'm contemplating making that my like main guitar and using the Duo Sonic as the back backup at this point. But um, I do I change pickups throughout the set depending if I'm going full gain. I'm obviously and then kneel down on the bridge and just crank the I have an iron horse so it just um, I crank that up and let it go kind of thing right so, yeah I, I have um, we all play different guitars with different uh, like pickups and I think that's really um, for us and our sound I think that's a high priority because if like if uh, my go-to is a fender strap um, just strap pickups, um, and I've got to use that whammy on a couple of on um, the way the world was, and because um, I do this this bend um, to kind of accentuate a note. But um, you know, if, if Brian was playing a strat with single coils and just was like wanted that, I'd play a different guitar with different pickups, just yeah. so that way we have different sounds. Um, and Brian, I don't want to butcher Jason's guitar, but I feel like it's it's the Jazzmaster body, 
I think he's got a P90 in the neck. And I want to say he's got like a, I don't know what brand it is, but it's a uh, humbucker in the bridge. And um, and Mike, Mike, like I said, my go-to is just a, it's a strat, strat pickups. I play on the second and fourth positions, you know? So the, the, the strat positions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What about amps? I have a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. I, I love that amp. I probably won't ever get rid of it, but um, it takes pedals real well. It does. Yeah. It's yeah. And durable. I don't really worry about it. It's a <laughs> right. pretty neutral sounding amp on its own, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's got a lot of balls. I mean, like I don't crank it past two. <laughs> no, just, no. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the way, especially yeah. my lamp that I use. I run that on top of a Marshall 410 cab. Oh, nice. So that really helps push the air. And we, we, we went and saw This Will Destroy You, and we we're like, man, they sound enormous. Like, what's going on? And kind of like, yeah. put that, it's the extension cabs. They're pushing so much air in this yeah. room. And that's why it sound, the bass also it gives a lot of stuff. But we all now run extension cabs. And it's, I mean, basically, I have half stacks running. Oh, that's awesome. Interesting. What about yeah, you? you? I use a uh, Fender Princeton. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I also um, have a Kemper that I have just like a clean matchless. I, I like to run stereo. Oh, nice. Um, and so I, I run both of those. Um, I need the amp live for some feedback during Shadow and Plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Kemper, I just, like I said, I want to have a, a wide sound. Um, right. And then we obviously run in, into an uh, extension cab. Uh, so yeah, and then Jason has like a like a vintage like Music Man amp or something like that that he had modded and he did a really good job of like uh, just he like put put it was a combo he put it into a head and then built a cab and all that's cool. Of stuff. So yeah, we we have amps that basically play really well with pedals, so, right? Because that's that's our thing. For <laughs> sure, yeah. It's 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 kind of wasted having a huge pedal board if the amp doesn't like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is the the segment of the show that Jet and I enjoy the most, I think. But it's the top five <laughs> favorite albums. I know we we kind of asked you guys to think about that before we got on the air. But uh, what would you consider are your top five most influential albums to your playing? Okay. Or as no songwriters, it can be other. Right. Do what? No particular order. Yeah. Like no, 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 no. Just okay. a, a collection <laughs> of. Um, do you want to go first? Or do you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kind of wing it because I, I, I don't know. Like, if if I spent time on it, like, I mean, God, I could come up with different iterations. Yeah, but... This is the what we like to call the preamble excuse section that we often get from the guests. So that's <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, definitely the first that comes to my mind is the Alchemy Index by Thrice. Um, that's probably my favorite album. I love concept albums and yep. they nailed it. I mean, it's beautiful how, yep. how they made each volume sound like what it is, like fire right. and water and all that. Um, another one that's randomly coming to my mind is Bring Me Your Love by City and Color. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a folk mm -hmm. record. It's, it's beautiful as well and pretty poetic. Uh, I am gonna go with "Define the Great Line" by Under Oath. Oh, yeah. I think it's a masterpiece. Uh, first part is heavy music, um, and then what do you think? I have to do it. The Fellowship of the Ring soundtrack. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yes, yeah, I, I, I really do listen to those like weekly. Like it's they're always on my rotation. Um, but as far as guitar playing, I already mentioned thrice, um, probably on letting go by circus survive. I really like the poly melodic stuff that they have going on. I mean, yeah. Nick and I have said this before and I, if they were an instrumental band, they'd probably be our favorite band. They, they're yeah. incredible. And it's, it's that the, the melodies intertwine so well, they're so different, but they work so well together that it's two vocalists singing on right. their own. I learned a lot about tone and just by listening to those records by them, but that, that record in particular. 
think you might, is that five or is that four? It is five. Uh, that's five. All right. Well, there, that, was, that was painless. <laughs> All right. No pressure, Nick, but the spot's yeah. on you, man. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I'd have to say, uh, first thing that popped in my head was in the soundtrack for Interstellar by Hans Zimmer. Yes. Uh, oh. That's just a masterpiece. So good. Hey, yeah. Back up, Brian. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, he, like, I don't know if y'all know this, but like when they're, um, on the planet with all the water, mm-hmm. like every every uh, click is like I forget how many years or something like that. So oh, it's like, yeah. I've yeah. never seen a soundtrack play so heavy into the role and oh, wow. be so subtle uh, at the same time. Um, Man, I'm getting. I literally just watched oh, no. that like three days ago, yeah. and I'm getting chills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's so good, man. Like the soundtrack, ugh, it's just so good. So I'd say that. Um, I'd say, uh, come now sleep by as cities burn. Um, yep. that's just, it has a lot. I'm very, I like emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just the first song on that album contact is so emotional and it's a very like lyrically, it's a pretty heavy song. Mm-hmm. Um, that like, uh, her guitarist is just, I think his name's Cody Bonet, um, was a huge influence in how I play and how I you know, move my hand on the, on the neck and all of that. Sure. Uh, I'd also like to say Circus Survive, the, um, I can never say it. It's their first album, um, due to whatever, okay. due to Rana or something. I'm, I'm probably, <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian's yeah. just not even going to help. You're like, yeah, I know it, but I'm like, not going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. You probably will text me later. Like this is what <laughs> Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's their first album. Yeah. Uh, I'm really big on that just because it was like, I remember hearing it for the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never heard like musicians play like this. Right. Um, I would also say, uh, this is going to be a little odd, but uh, Norma Jean is a huge influence of mine. Uh, yeah. So like their first, obviously, Bless the Marcus Child is, a classic, but I was very surprised with their newest album that came yeah. out. Um, I thought it held up pretty well and they kind of um, stayed classic to their sound and stuff. But just, I, I'm huge, like, I love ferocity and, and uh, just, I want to have, I want to write something that's like, yeah, like, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. So I, right. I remember, like, when we were writing, um, in exchange, I was like, I'm going to throw in a broken chord on this song. <laughs> yeah, figure it out. And yeah. I did. I, there's a broken chord on the song. And uh, that was like, that was like my Norma Jean mindset. Um, <laughs> crap, I need one more. I think one more. I hope one more. Yep. Yeah, one more. Uh, Almost home. Soundtrack from the Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is odd, but like, um, I'm a huge... If I if I play in a post rock genre esque band, I honestly try not to listen to post rock. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do that with a lot of things, uh, and so uh, one of the things that I listen to a lot, and I'll probably get crap for this, but The Weeknd, I think he's like a genius. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of no. funny, isn't it, Trey? Yeah, the, dude, yeah. We, we've talked about it. His new album yeah. was so good. Yeah, no, like I've. I, just the the music and the feeling and i'm just like god this guy's so good so mm. i i listen to the weekend a lot um, <laughs> you know i would i would have said somebody like uh kyle dixon and the guys that did the stranger things soundtrack mm-hmm. or i would have said Tycho. Um, right, right. but i like if i'm listening to it like if i just want to like have a like just good music that i i enjoy honestly it's, it's the weekend yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. so it's just I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy like a break from what I play. Right. So. Yeah, I have a playlist of just him and uh, the weekend. Yeah. Or, or, or not no, the weekend and the midnight. Oh yeah, nice. Just over and over. Yeah, it's so good. Whoever does his beats and stuff, I don't know if it's him, but whoever's doing it just kills it every time. Yeah, That's I don't know if you're record. allowed to be that talented and be that good of a writer. I don't. Right? <laughs> I hope not. I hope he doesn't write that. <laughs> it's just not fair. 
Well, cool, guys. Uh, we'll we'll kind of wrap things up. But is there anything else y'all want to say or, or talk about before we we close up? No, uh, thanks for having us. Um, like I said, we're gonna be we're working on some songs, so we'll have okay. something coming up. Can we get you back when you do, and we can talk about the new stuff? Please, okay. yeah, that'd be awesome. So, okay, well, yeah. thanks so we'll much for your al- favorite album. So yeah, uh, yeah. well, the question's <laughs> gonna be different next time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're like we're all prepared. Yeah. Top five canned foods, but in a town that doesn't allow canned foods. (laughs) Gosh. Thank you all. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate the kind words and uh, just, we love the conversation. I love getting to talk to other uh, musicians and um, you know, I know that the other guys wanted to be here. Um, Hopefully they can be in the next time. And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, well, next time we'll like, try and get uh, hopefully Zoom or or you know even if we're able to do it in person at some point, we'll be able uh, to yeah. just kind of get more of a more of a group sure, yeah. together in person. What a concept! Your, yeah, your poster in the background. Yeah, the Argonauts. Man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, that may or may not have been an intentional product placement. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, thank you. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, thanks, guys. Everybody, yeah, Nick and Brian from Driving Slow Motion. So glad you could come back to Gear and Gigs. Take care. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for another episode of Gear and Gigs. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube. Until next time, this is Jetstone saying, take it easy. <laughs>